So yeah, uh, I'm Bob Peavy House. I'm from Michigan. You were able to compete at the Dice Throne Tournament at the uh, at Gen Con this year. Uh, would you like to tell me a little bit about how that tournament went? Um, well, I won, uh, which is the important thing, really. Yes. Um, it was a lot of fun. I had uh, a couple of friends that I've gotten into Dice Throne that I managed to get joined with me. Unfortunately, I got put up against one of them in the semifinals, and it was close, but I managed to knock him out. But it was a lot of fun. I ended up in the finals against the same person I was in the finals against last year, too. She's also very good at the game. And if the uh, characters that we were assigned for the finals had been different, she probably could have taken me. Now, there is a lot of online resources at, on Dice Throne. But what are some strategies that you like to use? Uh, just a few pointers you have for those who are competing in Dice Throne, which is going to be one of the side tournaments at the World Series of Board Gaming this year. Yeah, that's actually how I heard about the World Series. Dice Throne sent out an email that mentioned, I'm like, oh, I should look into that. But the, the strategies vary a bit from character to character. Certain characters like the Pyromancer or the Curse Pirate are all about uh, dealing damage to your opponent as quickly as possible to burn them out before you die. Other ones like the Shadow Thief, uh, maybe the Paladin, prefer longer games because they, they can ramp up to be doing a lot of damage toward the longer the game goes on. Um, there's a couple things that work more, more or less for any character. Um, first is, you know, um, how to manage your dice. Um, it's basically like fantasy combat Yahtzee. You get your five dice, you roll them, you can choose to keep any of them, re-roll the others up to three times. Um, and then what you go for, well, what you end up will, with will activate different abilities that do different things. And you know, different characters will have different abilities. There's... A couple tricks to it then depending on the character um certain dice sides or certain icons on the dice will let you have more give you more options if you hold on to them they have better odds of getting something because if you whiff that puts you back a whole turn and that will generally cost you a game so keeping track of which dice are good to hold um will probably be one of your better strategies with the game you also get a bunch of cards you can play and some of them will also let you modify your dice there's also some of them that will let you modify your opponent's dice to make it harder for them to hit you. And generally, it is better to save your dice modifying cards to use against your opponent than to try and get yourself a better uh, a better outcome on your roll. Because even if you, you go from like a, a four of a kind to a Yahtzee, or a five of a kind, which is an ultimate, which does your best ability... Um, the amount of increase you get for the card is only going to be maybe five points of damage for the, the equivalent of that. Versus if you make them with their entire turn, that's, you know, like could be up to eight or nine damage. And, you know, it's all about finishing them before they finish you. So every little bit helps. Um, and I always ask this too. Is there any pitfalls or mistakes that you see people make when they're playing Dice Throne? Um, I think Tunnel Vision is probably the... The one, one of the more common ones. Um, you start out and you see your first dice roll and you think, oh, I'm going to go for this one thing. And then you take the two next rolls and try to go for that and ignore the fact that you accident, you, you managed to get yourself a large straight on the other, ta other time and grab it and re-roll it before you realize, oh, I actually rolled something better on the, off on the offside. So you kind of want to reassess what your best option is after each of your rolls. So you're going to be in the Dice Throne Tournament at the World Series of Board Gaming. Uh, so wish uh, I'm, I'm assuming, right? But, yeah. I uh, figure I've got better odds at that than whatever the, the actual ring tournament is during that day. <laughs> awesome. What, uh, what ring, other ring events are you planning on competing in, if you don't mind me asking? I'm doing Azul, Splendor, um, Patchwork, and Dune Imperium. Although Dune Imperium is going to be the same time as the Dice Throne Finals, so I might end up skip, skipping that one. You got to go the one you have the biggest chance at, right? <laughs> yep, I totally understand that. Um, one other thing I might oh, mention. Yeah. Yes. Like when I was first getting into competitive Dice Thrones, um, what helped me most, there was a series of posts on the Board Game Geek uh, strategy forum for it uh, by a user named Argon Jedit. He's done a post for each of the characters that they've put out so far and even updated some of them when they modified the character or did gave, gave some revisions for it. And that was very instrumental in helping me learn the good competitor strategy for the game. So if anybody, if you're putting this up for other people to learn from, I, I you know, put a link up to that. 
I'll definitely put a link into the, in the description. So yeah. get, it'd be nice to see more people get into this. It, and are they still releasing characters for Dice Throne? Oh, yeah. The prize for uh, winning the Gen Con tournament this year was actually getting in on the Kickstarter that they're going out with in October, which is actually going to be eight more X-Men type characters. Hey, that sounds great. Yeah. Sounds like it's not a game that's going to uh, lose popularity under, under anytime soon. So hopefully we see more people get into the tournament scene. Yeah, yeah. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Maybe it'll be one of the games in next year's World Series of Board Gaming. That'd be neat. That would be very nice. <laughs> yes. All right. All right. It was good talking to you then. Sorry, the brain started putting in. My name is Inigo Montoya. <laughs> <laughs>